Sometimes, finding a user's password or credentials can be easier than it should be. You know, like if they leave a sticky note on their keyboard or monitor with their password just written down, or if a new account is being provisioned and created at a new company or organization, and just in that user's onboarding, or even as part of their profile description, the default password is included and then never changed. That is exactly what we are going to showcase in this video to highlight some of those just human weaknesses and the faults and vulnerabilities that we own have. We either use a weak password or there's just one visible and publicly accessible. You should always change the default passwords. You shouldn't use a weak password like a common English word or something found in the dictionary, and you should be using a randomly generated secure complex password that can be maintained and managed by a password manager. And that is why this video is a great lead-in for today's video sponsor. Thank you so much, Passbolt. I'll go ahead and roll the promo, and then we'll get started with the video. Personally, I am a huge advocate for using digital password managers. A password manager lets you generate completely unique and super secure passwords for every single account or service that you use. And honestly, that is vital for your own security hygiene in today's digital world. Passbolt is a free and open source password manager that allows both individuals and team members to store and share passwords securely. I've been using Passbolt to help organize and manage credential access for my own team, and I absolutely love how easy Passbolt is to use and how you can make it solely your own. You control your data. You can host your own Passbolt management instance completely for free and run it on your own Linux servers or deploy it straight to the cloud with hosting providers like AWS or DigitalOcean. Easily create and store passwords and autofill whenever you need to with the Passbolt browser extension. You never have to worry about remembering passwords ever again. And best of all, Passbolt is completely open source. You can look through the code on GitHub, extend it with their REST API, integrate with it on the command line, and even contribute and hack on the code. You can get started with Passbolt for free with my link in the description. Their cloud instance is incredibly easy to spin up, and seriously, give it a try. If you've never used a password manager before, Passbolt can change your life. Huge thanks to Passbolt for sponsoring this video. This video is going to be bouncing back and forth between two different perspectives. The first being us setting up our workspace, the experiment, the playground inside of our Active Directory environment, set up with the virtual machines we've been using through the whole rest of the series, and experimenting and playing within Kali Linux, being the attacker, being that offensive mind that will go ahead and try to find these passwords if we have already some access to the domain. It's going to be a lot of fun, so let's dive in. Okay, so I am on my Windows 11 management client virtual machine. I'm going to open up the terminal so we can get back into the action here. And now that that is open, I do have this Active Directory folder that I'm working out of. I'll move into that. And inside of that directory, we can open up Visual Studio Code to work with all the code that we've been using previously. So in the previous videos, we've been defining an Active Directory schema as sort of a JSON file format where we can basically outline the structure of our domain. We'd have groups that we could have users be a part of, and we can define each user as to what standalone hosts they might be a local admin on, but they are all, of course, domain users, basically taking the first name, last name structure, first initial, uh, and then last name filled out. So that's why they're all Alice, Lyson, Bob, Ob, and Charlie Harley. We'd supply a password in the groups that they're present in, but we were using some pretty weak passwords that were found in regular dictionary files, like a rocku.txt or anything that might be used in penetration testing for that simple, small, low-hanging fruit. We used a Gen AD PowerShell script that, yes, I know uses some pretty crappy PowerShell. I do promise on fixing those, but my VM is running very slow and I am at my wits end trying to record this video. So I'm going to try and move quick and just get to the stuff that is necessary. Ultimately, we end up creating a Active Directory user with our function create AD user, retrieving object properties based out of that JSON file. All we really need to end up doing is now basically change the user's Active Directory object to include a description. Uh, if you aren't familiar with this syntax, uh, we can go ahead and use some of the learning that we might find online. Remember that ways hell user on GitHub does have an Active Directory environment uh, 
little script that we could work with or at least get some ideas from being a vulnerable Active Directory environment. So if we go fire that up, we could see the syntax that they use. So hey, we just get a little nudge in the right direction. Okay, now that that page has finally loaded, we can go ahead and take a look at that Vuln AD script. And I'm just gonna hit Control F on my keyboard so I could search for how they provide a user description. Looks like they end up using the set AD function or a PowerShell commandlet where they pass in the user and then use the description tag to specify a string as to what that description might be. We could use this just to explain, oh, here is your password. So let's uh, see and validate that that is a worthwhile function we could use. I'm going to just simply Google that. And the results look like it is a valid function call or just a commandlet that we could go ahead and use within PowerShell. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to pivot back over to my Visual Studio Code and back in this Visual Studio Code window, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to set a show password field inside of our schema. So I am just going to set show password to true. And now back in our Gen AD PowerShell script, we can test after we create the user if that user object has the show password field set to true, in which case we can go ahead and set AD user being the principal name that we've defined above as the username that we've created and set the description to your default password is dollar sign password being the variable that we've achieved just above. Now, fingers crossed, we can go ahead and run this Gen80 script with this AD schema. Now, it would be worthwhile over in our AD schema to probably create a, another user. So let's copy this block and go ahead and paste that here. He doesn't need to be local admins anywhere, but we can just create a new user, Dan Ann. And let's create kind of a secure password here. I don't know, let's just randomly mash on the keyboard to give different, you know, special characters and stuff. Please subscribe. Lol. Exclamation point. Perfect. That's a long secure password. So let's go see if we can copy these to our domain controller and reconstruct the domain with that functionality in place. Fingers crossed, this logic is all that we need. And let's see if this comes together for us. I'm gonna hop back over to my PowerShell window and I'm going to uh, create a new PS session to my domain controller, which I believe I have set to dc1.xyz.com with the credential being a get credential. And that should be xyz.com. I think it's just xyz it might even need. And the administrator, it's been a while since I've gone ahead and recorded some of these Active Directory videos, so I'm way out of practice. Fingers crossed that works. And I might need to be using an IP address there. I don't know if I actually have that set. Um, so let me go validate and remind myself what this password is, or the IP address of this thing is. Okay, now that I am logged in on the domain controller, I'm just going to check the IP address with ipconfig. I am 111155. Just a good reminder. Let's try and run that new PS session again, and let's actually store that as a variable here. And actually, we should get the credential and save that as its own variable. I haven't recorded in so long that I had to reset the password. Now we can call that DC1, and then we'll bring that to that IP address. Perfect, now we can enter PS session just to validate that we can control that. Perfect, we can. Um, I believe I actually don't wanna set up any local admins because I'm not gonna be running any of the workstations. Um, and I actually wanna make sure that uh, it doesn't try to remote into each of those because we I remember we needed to be within the DC to be able to do that. So let me close out of this session. Let me go fix up our AD schema so we can remove these local admin portions. I'll save that. Let's go back and I believe we can copy item. We want our AD schema. Oh, that is in the code directory. So let's try and copy item now with our AD schema to the DC1 session. Is that how it's done or is it to session? Yeah, so to session and then let's use our DC1 present there. Oh, destination, I believe. 
can be well yeah we can do c windows tasks how about that granted it would help if i spelled destination correctly i have an extra o in there Alrighty, that is done let's try and do that with our gen ad script just as well copy over now let's hop back over to our dc well granted we can just do it with our session get back in let's move to c windows tasks and let's run our gen ad with the undo however that needs the json file that is at ad schema dot json okay that should clear up the current environment if there was anything there previously thanks to the code that we wrote in earlier videos looks like it erred on the dan user but that's just fine because we had just previously created that it was not really just yet but let's go ahead and now try to generate the environment with actually you know what before i do that i realize i totally flubbed this up and forgot to actually set dan to use the show password true option so let's move that out of alice and go bring it down to dan Perfect. Gonna have to copy that right back over. So let's go ahead and use that copy item one more time. Jump back in. And now let's try that gen AD with our AD schema and cross our fingers. Hopefully I didn't do that wrong. Okay, I don't see any errors just yet. We can try to get AD user. Let's try to get properties description. And let's remove that preceding colon. And there it is. Here's your default password. Get it here. And this is going to be the note that is theoretically left behind by some administrator or just, hey, whatever misconfiguration in the Active Directory environment that just happens to be known for that user. Now, pivoting our perspective to a threat actor or an adversary, let's hop over to our Kali Linux virtual machine and I'll go ahead and open a terminal here. I suppose, honestly, we can just be in a temporary directory. We can make a directory for, hey, um, passwords. Hop in there and let's go ahead and use our Bloodhound Python utility. So using credentials that we just happen to know because, hey, we were able to determine that with crack map exec or some OSINT, whatever the case may be, using the DC that we specify and then whatever boilerplate that that happens to need given a domain, let's try and collect everything. Now, before I do that, we do need to be sure that we actually have that staged in our resolve.conf, I believe. I think we want to end up searching xyz.com and our name server should be the IP address of the domain controller, 192.168.111 and 155, as we know. So let's go ahead and save that, make sure that is corrected, uh, and let's see if we can then run our bloodhound pi script. Uh, or the command here, using the user Alice that again, we just press the I believe button with me here. Uh, we know the password bubbles. Let's see if we can retrieve all the information uh, with the collection methods all across these. It queries some computers that it just happens to know. It found eight users. And now in this directory, we've dumped out all that stuff. Uh, now, is this something that I could load into Bloodhound? Let me try and start up Neo4j console uh, and let's get bloodhound situated for us there we go neo4j is now running we can go ahead and open up bloodhound just as well down below so we can dot slash to run bloodhound as we have previously neo4j username i believe we left as neo4j and neo4j password i believe we set to bloodhound let me try my luck there it might have still just been neo4j nope cool logs me in now, this is all of our previous data. I want to see if we can go ahead and dump this. Oh, here it is at the very bottom of the database info on the left. We'll go ahead and clear the database. That's totally fine. Yep, absolutely sure. We want to start with the clean slate. And now on the right hand side, we can go ahead and import or upload data. Uh, let's move into this temp directory that we just created for passwords. And let's select all of these to go ahead and open them and load all of this in. Okay, now that that is done, we can go ahead and go query around for what we happen to have here. So let's just see if I can search for users. And there we go, we have domain users up here. Let's click on that. If we wanted to expand on that, we could check out what are those direct members. And there we can see each of these, Charlie, the administrator, Kerberos Ticket Granting Ticket, Alice, and Bob, and our friend Dan here. Now, this tells us right away, you can see it on the left-hand side here, hey, your password is, and then given that detail. Now we have that credential. 
that might be useful or worthwhile because, hey, maybe they're a local admin somewhere in the domain that could give us a little bit more access. Uh, if you wanted to, hey, get a little bit scrappy, you could just as well open up all of the files that you might have extracted out here. Just looking at the users specifically, if you wanted to go ahead and format this JSON, we could track down and scroll through here. Is there any mention of password? If I just control F and search for this. Oh, here in the description, your default password is all this nonsense. Please subscribe. Now, obviously this is kind of bad practice. Obviously this might not be always realistic. However, you might find it in some cases. And this could very well be, hey, getting us out of the case where you're using the defaults uh, or, excuse me, uh, very, very weak dictionary passwords or common English words. So that's all that really is to it. Uh, we just set that description tag or that parameter with the set A to user commandlet and automating that process. And we can still track that down very easily with Bloodhound or any other things that we might end up using. I think this is still a little bit of low hanging fruit. Of course, it's still worthwhile to check. It's still very good to look through and know. And you might even see it in some modern certification, uh, you know, culminating capstone challenges, uh, things that could test your skills within Active Directory. And it, again, it's something simple, but it's still worth checking. And a good thing to note if you're ever in a case where even in a real environment, yeah, you've got some of that cheesy stuff that's just left over for, hey, provisioned accounts or some notes or a user or administrator just left something there. It is worthwhile to look through. Bloodhound can save the day. You could also be using anything else. Hey, query LDAP, doing whatever you might need to do to get that user info down to you. But ultimately, it is the fault of, hey, us just not protecting our passwords. And that's something that we all need to take a little bit more seriously. And I think there are some great utilities out there that happen to do that. Sweet sponsor placement. Thanks so much. I super appreciate you tuning into this video. Uh, this was a little bit tough to record because my virtual machine was running like molasses. Uh, you know, got a snail just cruising through there trying to drag a bowling ball. It was not going too good for me. I think I've waited maybe two hours to try and get this video recorded, but <laughs> that's Windows Virtual Machines for whatever reason. Anyway, thank you again and again. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do all those YouTube algorithm things. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Please subscribe just like it said in the password. And again, huge thank you to Passbolt for sponsoring this video. I think everything that they're doing is incredible. It's, it's open source. It's got some free aspects to it. You can hack on the code. You can get all in the mix and in the weeds there. And I think that's fantastic. Please do go check them out. There's a link in the description and I would love to see you show them some love. Thanks so much, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.